So in the video for the mod pack, a few of you did suggest that I should show you how to make simple mod edits, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. In this particular video, we're going to focus on getting rid of the duplicate units added in by Of Monsters and Men to the mod pack from last week. Though this guide will give you the basic knowledge required to make small basic edits to pretty much anything you need. I understand you're not going to become a god of mods simply by watching a single video, however, so anything tricky or advanced or anything regarding scripting will probably require a lot more experimenting and a lot more patience. I guess with that though, let's get started. So first things first, if you've never done any modding of your own, we'll have to get you a few things. We're going to get you an assembly kit, the pack file manager, Kadrin's mod manager, and the mod itself in question. The latter three I'll have linked down below, but the former you'll have to download through Steam. Doing so is very easy, you're going to go to your library, go to the top left and where it says games, click that and select tools from the list. Now scroll down and nab Total Warhammer Assembly Kit Beta. Ordinarily, modders also recommend having Notepad++, a hex editor, and GIMP, and I personally recommend having those things as well, but we're not going to be using them on our adventures today. Alright, with all that sorted, go ahead and install them somewhere. I personally use a folder for all of my modding content across all of my games, but really the installation location doesn't matter, and then go ahead and boot up Kadrin's Mod Manager. If you've never used Pack File Manager before, you might want to pause the video here and go and check out CBD's awesome tutorial about the basics of how to use it, which is also linked down below. But we're also going to get into detail about what it is you're actually looking at, so don't panic if you haven't seen that. Now, before we start modifying Of Monsters and Men, we need to find Of Monsters and Men, which is a lot easier said than done normally. You see, when you download mods from the workshop, Steam doesn't do the easy, obvious thing of installing them into your game directory and naming them after what the mod is. No, instead the workshop has a separate directory all into itself for all of the games, and mods are put under super easy to remember names like 346945 or 313712. If you have hundreds of mods downloaded, or even more than that across multiple games like I do, it will quickly become impossible to try and sift through all of the random numbers to find what it is you're actually looking for. So instead of doing that, we're just going to cheat our way to success. So go into Kadrins, find the mod we're looking for to edit, right click it and select open with PFM. Now the first time you do this, you'll have to direct the mod manager to wherever it is that you installed the pack file manager, uh, the exe file specifically. Doing this will open up the file in Pack File Manager, so now we don't have to go and bother finding it in the mess of Steam directories. So, once it loads into Pack File Manager, you'll see the tree in the left hand side is fully collapsed. Hitting the plus sign will expand out the first branch, which in this case will present us with just four options. We want the first branch though, DB, which stands for database, which will suddenly present a litany of options when expanded. It can be pretty overwhelming on a mod of this size, but luckily for us, we actually only need to deal with two of these categories. If you are curious about what they all mean though, as I said before, do go check out CBD's tutorial where he goes into more details about what each of them do mean. And don't be afraid to experiment, modding in Total Warhammer is actually pretty fun and surprisingly simple for a lot of things to do. Just as a reminder, for our edits we are trying to remove the Tuscor Chariot and the Gorgon because they are already covered by other mods in our pack, pack list. To do this, we're, we could edit a bunch of different tables, over a dozen in fact, to completely remove the two units from the mod, and if you want to go this way, I'll briefly touch upon this at the end of the video. There is, however, a far simpler method of doing this. Simply go to the Building Units Allowed tables, which effectively dictates what the buildings allow you to hire in the campaign, select all instances of the Gorgon and all instances of the Tuscor Chariots, and delete them. Next, go to Units, Customs, Battles, Permissions tables. This allows you to select units when you're setting up a custom battle. And once again, we are going to select all instances of these two units and delete them. After this, go up to the top left corner, go to File, select Save As, and save it as a new mod. In my case, I saved it as Edited of Meta and Monsters. It's not exactly the most creative name, but in the pack file, or in Kadrid's Mod Manager, I won't mistake what it is. In case you're wondering why we don't simply save over the main mod, it's actually very simple. Every time of Men and Monsters will get updated on Steam, no matter what that update entails, it will completely override our changes. And given that a lot of these mods, especially ones like of Men and Monsters, get updated at least once a week or so, this would create a lot more work for us to maintain our changes. In creating a separate file, we can wait out the updates until we're ready to do them again ourselves. Anyways, when saving, do make sure you save it under the data folder of your Total Warhammer Steam directory, it should be the default location for Pack File Manager, but just double check that it is. Otherwise, Kadrid's Mod Manager won't be able to actually find your mod in the first place. Alright, so now that we've got it saved, let's move over to the part of modding that will usually make you either excited or frustrated. 
Testing. Let's go back over to Kadrid's Mon Manager and hit Refresh. Now if we look, of Men and Monsters will have 464 conflicts with Edited of Men and Monsters. This is good, it means everything else in our Edited mod still works. Disable the base of Men and Monsters, go down to your list and find the Edited of Men and Monsters in the list, and activate that. Now before we hit Save, let's boot up the game and make sure everything is working great, because we don't want to create a screwed up profile for ourselves. So first up, we'll try Battle Mode. All right. Everything seems to be working great there, so now let's move over to Campaign. And once again, everything is working just peachy there too. Perfect. Let's go ahead and save our mod list now so that we just naturally boot up with our edited copy instead of the default one in the future. So for those of you who are wondering why all we did was remove their hiring requirements instead of completely removing them from the mod, the simple answer is there's just less things to break this way. If we delete something that's referenced by something else in the mod, the mod might cause a failure for the campaigns to load or just an immediate crash to desktop even if we could never hire that unit in the first place. By removing the option to hire the, hire the unit, we minimize our chances of breaking something else in the mod. Now, there is the potential to remove the UI elements and every single instance of the unit in the mod, and doing it that way will free up a very tiny amount of memory and theoretically cause a faster boot time for the game, but the former is only a couple megabytes worth of space and the latter is immeasurably small, like we would need to do a considerable amount to accomplish that, so it's not really the wisest way of doing things. Anyways, with that, you're now all set. Now, this was a pretty simple, small change. All we had to do was ref remove a few lines from two tables. But honestly, with this same walkthrough, you can make soft compatibility patches for tons of things. So in an instance where you have two mods accomplishing similar things, you can essentially go through and delete the instances of the ones you like the least. And once you've got some more experience and are willing to take on a little bit more risk, you can even start copying parts of one mod that you like into singular mods that combine a bunch of mods that you like. However, big 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 disclaimer here, it is not okay to upload stuff like this to Steam, only do this for your own personal use. It would be incredibly inappropriate to pretend like we came up with a whole mod by ourselves in this instance, where basically all we did was come up with nothing and just deleted a few lines. But that's it for this video, so I hope this has inspired you to poke around a little bit more with the PFM and try your hands at creation down the line. If you've got any questions, post them below and I'll do my best to answer. I'm not some sort of modding god by any stretch of the imagination, though perhaps if you get super super lucky, Ajamuk or Great Tiger Games might be able to help out with more advanced stuff, but I can at least help out with the simpler stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.